let's jump into the city haze and fog controls. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I haven't turned on haze or fog yet, and I'm going to render. Now, when you first render this city scene, when you open it, you may have a 19 to 20 second lag. I didn't have that because I just rendered it a little bit ago. And I think it's because Cinema has to build a criteria of all these materials that overlap and reflection and all this stuff. But once you've rendered it, then you can see it starts rendering pretty quickly. Of course, it still took about uh, 30 seconds to render. Okay, so this is our city without uh, haze. This is uh, the city of the future, I guess, where <laughs> we have no pollution, no haze, no humidity, nothing. But it's not really realistic anyway. So, so let's turn the haze on. Uh, by default, uh, I've got to set 10% at 15,000 centimeters. So let's just take a look. Okay, so with this rendered, you can kind of start to see some of these buildings in here have some haze. This one in the back, very hazy. Uh, these, but this is not really strong haze, okay? So um, what I want to do is we're going to crank this up to 100 so we can see like a pretty substantial amount of haze. are all taken about 30 seconds, but I'm uh, sp speeding, fast forwarding through them. Now, let's take this up to the maximum uh, foreground haze. This is a 30,000 uh, centimeter limit, but it pushes it out to the very edges of the city. So let's take a look. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of pollution. If you notice, though, the center buildings, at least uh, it looks that way to me, are not quite as in as much fog. But let's take this uh, city haze amount and let's put it up to 300 and see what happens. The slider only goes to 100, but you can put in any amount you want. Okay, so now you can see we've really blown out the entire sky. And we're getting close to probably just wanting to use the fog. But let me show you something else. And we still got quite a bit of highlights on the building. So let's take the sun down a little bit. Actually, I'm taking it down to zero. Okay. So it doesn't really look that great. Okay. Um, but I wanted to show you what, what happens with that. But let's leave that down a second and go in here. And this is a funny thing about the haze. Right now we've got this fairly bright color. But let's say we want to get it uh, like a dark blue. Okay. You're going to see a weird thing happen here. Okay. So what happens is fog depends on a bright color or a light color at least. And the darker you make this, the less foggy it becomes. We couldn't even see the sky at these settings on that last render. Now the sky is coming back. But let's say you like the way the buildings looked, okay, in this coloration. What you'd have to do is come in here, and I would start first by just turning off the sky and the clouds, okay? And then let's re-render that. So that actually looks a little cooler than it did before. So let's go back into the haze. Um, let's turn our sky and clouds back on and go back into the haze tab. And let's take this down to where I really had planned uh, and normally use it. And that's really to create uh, a kind of a normal haze, um, which, you know, around 10% uh, is nice and 15. But I want to show you how this works. So now I've got it set at 10% at 5,000 centimeters. And I think we can just do a strip this time. I'm going to turn the sun back on before we render again. But if you imagine the haze starting in the center of the city, and then as you increase this foreground haze, the haze moves out. So let's put it at 10. 
And let's kick this up to 20 and see. And let's put our sun back on. We'll just put it at about half or so. Now it's looking a bit more realistic. Okay, these back buildings, these big tall buildings in the distance are starting to go into uh, into the haze, but our front buildings are still fairly sharp. Okay, and if we just crank this up, the amount of haze, let's do it to 50. Now you're really starting to get the divide of that haze. So let's say that this back is just the way you want it, but you want more haze in the front. Well, instead of increasing the amount of haze, you might just try this at 15,000. And now we've got a nice gradient haze coming out. And of course, if you wanted the foreground and even more haze, like we did before, you would go ahead and increase that somewhat. So you want to have a play around with that. And I have not tried the haze and fog together, and I'm not going to in this tutorial. But let's see what the fog does. So right now, the I've got it set at the defaults, 150,000 centimeters uh, out and, uh, of course, enabled, and the color as white. You can see that the fog works quite a bit differently from the haze. You see that we had our haze set to about this amount, uh, this amount on the city. This might be a little more, but look what's happened to the sky. Okay, when you use the fog, it is going to obliterate the sky. Um, I'm going to bring this down into a, mm, a little more creepier color. Um, but you have the same issue with this as you do with the haze. And that is the darker you make it, the less uh, hazy it gets. Now that's holding up still pretty well. We still have some nice fog. But the fog is what I used for the UFOs in the promo piece because you can um, really hide big objects in the fog and then uh, reveal them slowly uh, into the foreground. Okay, so that actually you know doesn't look too bad. So let's take this down to, I don't know if, you, if you've used, this is basically the standard fog that comes in cinema. I just put the controls out here, but if you haven't used it, um, it takes a little bit of playing around with. And, you know, that actually looks pretty cool. So let's um, let's take the sunlight. There was sunlight coming in, and that seems odd with this much fog. So let's take the sunlight all the way down and re-render this. So that's looking pretty cool. But let's say that you want it um, even foggier up front, less definition to the buildings, and all of that. And we, we could take this down to 20 and that would start. But instead, and we haven't, you know, unless you've watched these uh, tutorials out of order, you may not have looked at the tutorial yet on the Urbanscape Global Lighting. But I have a switch out here for it to turn it on and off. And I just want to show you what happens when we turn that global lighting off. I have the sunlight completely off. I have the global lighting completely off. And I'm pretty sure that the moon is uh, oh, it's not, but it may not be pointed at that. We'll turn that off too. And let's re-render this and see what this looks like. Now we're getting some like really eerie looking uh, stuff going on, almost like this fog laying in the in the city. Um, I'm going to try to put that moon back on. I'm not even exactly sure where it's pointing. Yeah, so there's might be a little influence from it. Let's render one more time and see. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely made a big difference. You know, we've got all these nice highlights on the roofs, uh, little reflections and things picking up from from that moonlight. 
So uh, the City Haze and Fog is so cool because there's so much you can do with it. Let me just show you that if you want the fog to start to recede, you got to get into some pretty big numbers. If you remember, the default was 50,000. I just put in 100,000. Okay, so now it's off our foreground. Okay, and of course our buildings are becoming very dark because there's nothing to illuminate them. So let's go into our urban skate or uh, our global lighting. We'll turn that back on. Go back in this haze and let's double this. Let's make it 200,000. And we're starting to see some clouds in the viewport. I don't I don't know if they'll show up in the actual render. Okay, so that's the haze and fog. You can get some really unusual and cool effects with this. So, see you in the next tutorial.